Hello my friends, John LaRuvi here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, I'm going to give you another review of The Seventh Citadel, specifically because I just finished Data Chem's Awakening. So I finished this entire threat book, okay, and I completed, well, I should, yeah, completed the whole threat, and it turns out that I won, which is way different than ever um, from a standpoint of The Seventh Continent. But I wanted to give you a a synopsis of my feelings at the end of it and tell you whether I think it's worth it or not. So I had a very positive experience, very positive review of this game earlier. And I'd kind of gotten through a couple scenarios and um, made some progress and things. And now having completed entire threat, here's what I think. First of all, the game is definitely worth it if you like these kinds of games where you're exploring and you're trying to figure out small to medium-sized puzzles of where things are and how to accomplish things. It does a great job doing that. It is a great game in that regard for sure. It has this entire dialogue book brimming with content that you will take a look at throughout the entire threat and throughout the game. And it parses it out in different ways so that you won't be spoiling anything for any of the other things that you're doing. So I think it's a great way to design a game. Same thing with all the cards. You know, they give you hundreds of cards that make up your play area. And I've shown those a little bit before. And in this game, you know, you really are rewarded for taking some decent notes when you find things that are good and bad along the way which they did a good job. I really appreciate them giving you a map to work off of. So this is a sheet here, and in the center is the map. And you can take whatever notes you want down, and then there's this whole tech tree sort of thing that you can develop, which is really cool and helps you kind of customize your experience. Plus there's this entire town uh, or citadel page where you can build specific buildings based on what you think you want to do. I just really, really think that was smart. And then there are these attributes that you'll fill up throughout the time your, your quests, and those will determine other consequences if you have a certain amount of this or that or whatever. In general, the game is really, really satisfying to play. And when you look at how frustrating sometimes Seventh Continent, the Seventh Continent could be, this game is not nearly as frustrating, at least not for that first threat scenario. Uh, it, it turns out, at least I felt like, the full first threat scenario here, the data chems, and I say the first, I don't know if it's the first, but that's just the way I felt like I should start there. Data chems realm, or awakening, pardon me. It was definitely winnable with the proper thought and a bit of luck and a bit of preparation. You, know, you really have to be inquisitive in this and you have to weigh kind of building up and taking advantage of the opportunities that are at hand, building up your character, building up your citadel with the risk of doing so. You know, you could have some of these things backfire and you got to be careful. And so there is that idea uh, in this game for sure of playing like a legacy game without having to tear up the components. The other thing is this, even though you now kind of know what you're doing. If I had to replay in a couple of years or when I kind of forget about it a little bit, this scenario again, because they include side quests and other things, you definitely can still play that main threat, the whole thing again, without feeling like it's just a complete drudgery. Because even though you might know, all right, generally, this is what I got to do to accomplish it, maybe you want to spend more time trying to accomplish the side quests that they give you in this game. And I unlocked a ton of side quests, but because I was so concerned about making sure that I didn't lose a scenario, I never actually completed any of them. So there's a lot of content that I didn't see, even though I could have. And so... They also do a decent job with the way that they control some of the mechanisms in the game from keeping you from wandering too far off the beaten path. Uh, so that helps too. Now, as far as the gameplay goes, it does get a little bit repetitive after you've played, you know, so many games. I had to play nine total games, and I think included in that was the introductory scenario of, so yeah, nine to finish the threat. Now, I could have played more. Had I not completed some of them on my first run, they would have sent me back out. So it's possible that I could have completed more. And each of those probably took me between one and two and a half hours to do. And so 
in a single book, in this single uh, scenario threat book, you've got probably 20 to 30, depending on how it goes, 25 to 30 hours of game, which is awesome. But that does mean that you get pretty used to the mechanics, and that can get a little bit um, repetitive for sure. I mean, because every time you take a step into something else, you're going to get some situation which you're going to have to resolve, and you're going to resolve it through the same way. You're going to resolve from drawing cards, putting them out, doing what you could do to get the best stars, activating icons, etc. So there is that, okay? And that is going to dominate your experience here. But I still thought that the excitement of trying to figure out what was behind every turn and every corner and getting more of the map filled out and exploring different things made that repetitiveness worth it. And I'll say this, in games like, um, what was it called? Falling, not Falling Sky. Um, the under, the, the game where it was about, it was a very long storybook game and I can't remember the name right now, but it's the one where it was, it was, uh, under the island or underneath. I can't remember. Darn, it's driving me nuts. But anyway, some of those other dialogue books by the guy from who did Near and Far and, and, uh, those kinds of things. Those game, those are also very repetitive. And I thought that the mechanism there was not nearly as interesting, uh, as this mechanism here with the cards. And I love how you add more advanced skills to your deck. By the time I finished this threat threat scenario, my whole deck had probably doubled, if not more in size, based on how I built it out through my choices that I made throughout the game. So there's just a lot of really good stuff that you can do in this game to add variety. And and you definitely feel like, even though I've completed the whole thing, there was tons of stuff that I didn't see. And I could definitely play it again. Now, there's at least one other threat scenario book in the main game, and I bought the um, expansion with the third one, so I have plenty to play here. I am going to put it away for a little bit because I want to savor it. When it comes out, I want to savor it, and so I'm going to pause on doing any more for a while and come back to it for sure. So I definitely think after playing this game for an awfully long time, it is certainly worth your effort if you if you like these types of games, you're okay with a mechanic that is repetitive, and you uh, have the you know the funds to do so. It's not a cheap game, but I do know that the new Kickstarter is coming out that will kind of bring the game back out to the audience, and that will be available. So I still think after doing the whole thing, it's worth the effort, worth the time, worth the money. It was very fun. So that's my two cents on it. I just figured I would do a wrap up after I've played the entire threat, and I'm looking forward to trying the other ones and also using what I know about the system and other things to help me with the other ones because I only explored a portion of the map, but I think there's going to be some spots where you're going to have a little bit of, you could take some of that knowledge with you. So we'll see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, everybody. And if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel because it really does help me out and I really appreciate that. So as always, whatever you decide to do in the future, I really do hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.